All right, and welcome everybody to how to get better attempt tips 101 to 150, which means it's basically the successor of 100 tips and tricks to help you get better at hunt showdown. It's recommended to watch that video first, but it's not necessary. This video is aimed at newer players, but hopefully veterans can learn one or two things too. This video was recorded during the 1.4 patches. So if you're watching the video, a few patches later, keep in mind that not everything might be valid anymore. Always check the pinned comment, same with the old video, to see if the tips are still up to date. Furthermore, this video includes some playstyle tips as well, which obviously reflect only my personal opinion. Yeah, personal opinion and the internet, what could go wrong? Additionally, four or five of these tips are a contribution from the comments that you guys posted underneath the 100 tips video. Thank you for that. Now, let's get started. Tip number one, frag bombs are not an explosive. Yes, this sounds weird, but frag bombs do not count as explosives regarding game mechanics. That means that they do not blow up doors and they do not destroy concertina wire. It works with shrapnel and not with bad abu. This is important to know if you want to push a fortified wellspring carrier and the countdown is already low. Tip number two, clarification of bulwark. Let's get rid of the myths and assumptions regarding bulwark. Bulwark reduces the explosive damage by 25%. This means you survive the harpoon shot from a bomb lens. The harpoon explosion is listed with 150 damage, which is exactly the amount of hit points a hunter has. A common myth is that the trade reduces the damage from frag bombs. It does not. Frag bombs, as mentioned earlier, do not count as explosives regarding game mechanics. Bulwark works fine with all kinds of dynamites though. Tip number 3. Cancelling charged melee attacks. If you want to cancel a charged melee attack without switching weapons, which even makes you drop your weapon if it's a world melee weapon, or losing stamina by releasing the swing, you can simply tap your dark side hotkey once. Yeah, I agree, there should be a simpler way to cancel a heavy melee attack that might come in the near future. Tip number 4. Max range of bullets. The max range of bullets is 300 meters. After 300 meters, the server just says, buy bullet. I want to mention this because lots of people think it's 250. Nope. That's just the max range for headshot kills with long ammo rifles. Tip number 5. Burning poison barrels. Nothing is worse than having to deal with the poisonous bugs from the green barrels mid-combat. If you expect a longer gunfight, for example at the boss lair, it might be smart to get rid of green barrels in your proximity. If you destroy the poison barrels with for example a lantern, the poisonous insects will die immediately. The only thing left is the poison cloud, which can be avoided. Tip number 6. Downed hunters and a boss banish. If you're down and your teammates can get a banish, let them do it immediately. Your destroyed health chunk will be restored even if you're still downed. The only downside to this play is that you are giving up the heal from the banish. Tip number 7. Doctor Grunts. If you see a Doctor Grunt near a boss lair, damage the Grunt and kite him into the boss lair. This will give you an extra world med kit for the upcoming defense. Tip number 8. Getting rid of barbed wire efficiently. This is how you get rid of barbed wire fast and efficiently. Equip a tool or consumable that makes you use your fists with the attack button. You're not taking damage from the barbed wire. The attacks are fast and you consume almost no stamina. Let's just ignore the fact that this would probably hurt like hell and let's enjoy a nice and easy way to remove barbed wire. Tip number 9. Store interaction. You should know that the store works with the combination of trade names. Want to know which weapons work with fanning? Type in the search field fanning. Want to know which weapons work with steady aim? Type in the search field steady aim. A question that I get a lot is, which guns work with steady hand? Well, here you go. Or maybe just list melee weapons. Sure thing, just like that. Play around with that feature and you will find a few more keywords. 
Tip number 10, one-shot mechanics for emulators. I guess the emulator is pretty high up there regarding very annoying enemy. So I'm going to show you a few ways to kill them instantly. The poison crossbow one-shots emulators without igniting them, as long as you're close enough. The heavy attack to the head with the world sledgehammer lets them take a nap very quickly. Poison bombs instantly kill them and the choke bomb lets them go to hell pretty quickly too. Tip number 11. Emulators and experience. Speaking of emulators, you only get XP from them by dealing the fatal blow. If they burn out, you won't get any XP. Tip number 12. Daily challenges. Ever had these evenings where you play until you almost fall asleep because Hunt is just so addictive? And then the next day you're like, god dang it, I forgot to claim my daily challenge last time I played. Don't you worry, you will automatically claim the daily challenge once you get a new one. Tip number 13, AI and branches. AI can trigger branches as well. Just because you hear a branch crack doesn't automatically mean it's a player. You obviously should still be on high alert. Tip number 14, yeah, denying vulture. Burn enemy teams to deny enemy hunters to loot with Vulture. As a solo, I burn most of the time Finnish teams. Therefore, other hunters cannot loot them for consumables, tools or money. Tip number 15. Denying weapon upgrades. Similar to tip 14, burn enemy teams to deny other enemy hunters to loot a possible weapon upgrade. Especially if you just killed an aftermath or a Nitro or a Dolph or any other of these filthy weapons. Tip number 16, learning gun sounds. I get on stream very often the question, how can I learn the different sounds from all the guns in the game? To train this, you can play thousands of hours. Or you go into the store, pick a gun, click 3D view, and then you scroll out with your mouse wheel. It shows you the distances while scrolling out. And then you click fire. Tip number 17, unlock chains. If you want to unlock certain weapons, keep in mind that any weapon from the unlock chain works towards the progress. That means if you want to unlock the normal crossbow, you can keep using the hand crossbow and don't have to use the poison crossbow, which comes after the hand crossbow unlock. This also goes the other way around. You can use the not yet unlocked crossbows from quick play to gain XP for the unlock chain. There's only one precondition that you must keep in mind. You must have the base variant unlocked. You unlock the base variant by reaching the related bloodline level. Tip number 18, grinding weapon XP. The final blow that kills an enemy counts towards the weapon unlock. That means you can knife an armor twice and then finish him with any other weapon. Their XP counts fully for the weapon that performed the kill. Tip number 19, how to unlock items fast. The fastest way to unlock weapons, tools and consumables is in a group. You will get the full XP your partner farms with his weapons. As long as he uses a weapon from the unlock chain that you need. For example, you want to unlock the Martini Henry Marksman? When your teammate kills stuff with the Martini Henry repost and you kill enemies with the base variant of the Martini Henry, Everything will count towards the unlock for the Martini Henry family. Tip number 20. Unlock XP and death. Your weapon XP will not be cut in half after you died. You will get the full amount. As you can see here, I died and gained 640 XP. Now let's go back in the store and check the progress. This looks a lot like 640 XP. Nice. Tip number 21. XP through melee. If you melee enemies with the stock of your rifle or punch them to death while you have a dynamite stick in your hand, it will count as progress for the rifle slash consumable you have equipped. This also works for tools. So right here, I have diffusers equipped because I want to unlock the flare gun. Since I have only three uses, I run around and punch a few things. Tip 
this way I do not need a toolbox to resupply every time. You can always do a heavy attack and a light attack with the stock of your rifle to gain some XP for your rifle. So, I went through one match and made a lot of stuff. What you're seeing here is basically all the rewards without firing a single bullet. So I'm going back into the store. I checked the Martini Henry that I played and there's a tiny bit of progress. I just tested it for this video. Then we go on to the tools and as you can see there's more progress for the flare pistol. Tip number 22. Chat and color opacity. If people chat with you, you can tell the distance to them by checking the opacity of their names and messages. The closer they are, the brighter the color. Tip number 23. Rifle positioning. If you're using sniper rifles, or rifles in general, try not to stand exactly in the window. Take a few steps back so that your barrel doesn't stick out of the building. Tip number 24. Poison trip mine. Let's have a quick look at the poison trip mine. I think we can all agree that they are kinda useless. Normally you rush through and all that happens is a short poison effect and a bit of damage. However, you can pair them with a concertina trip mine. This gets really dirty since this allows the poison to build up on the enemy. Let's have a look how lethal this combination can be. Keep in mind that I know what's about to happen and therefore react rather quickly. You will not make friends with that move, but you're here for the bounty anyway, am I right? Just keep in mind that antidote shots are a thing. Tip number 25. Red wagons. Red wagons are always a supply point. This helps a lot to spot supply points in quick play. Tip number 26. Choke bomb barrels. You should know that yellow and red barrels do not ignite if they are covered by a choke bomb cloth. They don't even break. Nothing happens at all. The use cases for this knowledge are limited, but you should still know this. Tip number 27. Choke bomb and explosives. So the choke bomb stops all explosives from going off, right? Nope. Wrong. Say hello to the wax dynamite stick. You actually might be able to bait people into blowing them up. Toss a choke bomb first, then the explosive right afterwards. They might search for shelter in the choke bomb. Tip number 28. Navigating while being flashed. Got flashed? You're as blind as the Chinese government looking for human rights? Check your compass. The compass will stay visible. This helps you to navigate and to escape. Tip number 29. Killing concertina armors. Concertina armors apply bleeding if you get too close to them. My personal favorite is to kill them quietly with two throwing knives to the hand. Or, if this takes a bit of practice, you bayonet them. A saber or a bomb lens work too. Tip number 30. Adjusting inventory in quick play. Once your tool or consumable slots are full, you can start to arrange your inventory if you want to. All you need is a fifth item. Scroll to the item you want to adjust, swap it. Scroll to the item in the right slot, swap it. Done. That way your muscle memory will not bend you over in tense moments. I hope that one day we will get a drag and drop mechanic for the inventory. Tip number 31. Stacking poison bombs. Poison bombs do not stack. Cover multiple entry points and don't stack them in a single choke point. Tip number 32. Big health chunks and poison bombs. Running through a poison bomb is possible with a big bar. The bar will recover after the poison effect is gone. Tip number 33. Antidote shots. You can use an antidote shot at the beginning of a match. You will be immune to poison for the whole match if you picked the big one. The small one is active for 30 minutes, which can be, depending on your playstyle, long enough. Keep in mind that you will still take the physical damage from the hive's insect swarm or the melee attacks from the spider. I often do this in budget loadouts. In sweaty tryhard sniper loadouts, it is a bit too weak in my opinion. Yes, you can get back consumables from toolboxes, but I prefer the guaranteed extra frag bomb over a liquid firebomb or a second antidote shot that you sometimes get. This is really just personal preference. Tip number 34. Antidote shots and death. 
Antidote shots are still active after you got down and revived. Tip number 35. Dodging a hive swarm. You can outrun and dodge the poisonous insects from the hive. That way you can very often kill her with melee attacks without getting poisoned. You basically curve slash strafe around the swarm and stab her in the face. Works very well with melee weapons with lots of range, such as a saber or bayonet, but the knife will, with a bit of practice, work just fine most of the time. Tip number 36. Wellspring on the floor. The wellspring can trade with an enemy hunter, or you know, die to other mysterious circumstances. You can see this by the icon in the top left corner. It's not showing you the number of closed rifts anymore and the name of the wellspring carrier is gone. Tip number 37. Sacrificing for the greater good. And the greater good is obviously you. Now this will be a controversial tip and I was hesitating to show this because I already know that some people might abuse this with random partners. But there is a chance that there will be a situation where this will be useful for at least one person in the team. So here we go. Remember when I said you can't extract as long as your down teammate is in the extraction zone? Well, this is not 100% correct. Should you still have a firebomb consumable, then you can burn your teammate. Once your teammate completely burnt out, the timer will continue and you might be able to extract, because who the expects this? Well, now people actually might. In all seriousness though, sometimes your teammate is on his last 50 HP bar in the open. You are hurt and your chances of reviving your teammate are basically zero. But hey, the decision is up to you, I'm only showing you the options. You have to live with the decision. Tip number 38, spreading fire. If you're on fire, keep in mind you can spread the fire. Touching hunters or AI will set them on fire. You will not set the world oil puddles on fire. Just stay the hell away from barrels. Tip number 39. Self-ignition in PvP battle. Alright, let's get to the freaky stuff. Now before you call me crazy, sometimes it is actually worth it to set yourself on fire in a PvP battle. Keep in mind that fire damage will always start at 150. It will not start where your actual health is. Got no stamina and don't have a line of sight to an annoying hive? Shoot a lantern to get rid of the swarm. Especially with fire resistant traits, such as soft skin, this can save lives without doing too much harm. Tip number 40. More realistic chaos bombs. If you can, stick a chaos bomb to AI. If enemies are close, they will hear that the shots are moving. So as long as the Chaos Bomb is not mimicking an aftermath, this might help to trick enemies. Tip number 41. Jumping over bear traps. Never try to jump over bear traps. You can't do it 95% of the time. You can't do it 100% of the time when they would kill you or when you're in a PvP battle. That's a fact. Tip number 42. Wellspring and token extractions. You have the daily or weekly token extraction challenge. Winning quick play as the wellspring counts towards the progress of the challenge. Tip number 43. Carriage extraction yeah, and cover. Do not try to hide behind the carriage. They are made out of paper and it's pretty easy to hit you since Weird people sister. can see your feet Dark underneath the carriage. The, the horses are bulletproof. Yeah. Use stem as cover. Dead. Nice. Tip number 44. Dauntless. Dauntless works mid-air and instantly. Have fun finding the courage for that. Now, just to warn you, we tried the mid-air interaction and it was really tough to get the interaction message. You can see a fuse hitting my face and the time window to hit the button was so short. Dauntless should be used more as a... Oh button when explosives drop in front of your feet and not as a yeah I'm going to play MacGyver mid air trade. Now that being said, they will increase the range for Dauntless with the upcoming patch. A change that I welcome a lot. Honestly, this will still be a big balls play, so be careful. Tip number 45. Additional uses for Dauntless. Dauntless lets you put out fuses and chaos bombs too, not just dynamites, frag bombs and so on. 
it does not help against, for example, the harpoon of the bomb. I mean, you're impaled with the thing, so, well, that's kind of difficult, right? Tip number 46. Check equipment silently. You want to check the status of your equipment, but you don't want to make noise by switching to a specific item. If you scroll with your mouse wheel quickly up and down and end in your initial position, you will see your equipment without making the switch sound. Tip number 47. Hellhounds with metal masks. The metal masks of hellhounds do not make them immune to headshots. Long ammo still does damage and can two-shot with headshots. Furthermore, the dogs howl sometimes before charging you. They raise their head while doing so. This leaves their underside of the head vulnerable. Tip number 48. Map progress. The map grays out the same way for everybody after taking a clue. This way you can predict player movements. This is very important to know and probably one of the most important tips of the video. Tip number 49. Clipping. Don't stay too close to walls. Rifle barrels might clip through walls or windows. This will make you an easy warbang kill. Tip number 50. Cash money moves. After you burned hunters, for whatever reason, you can put them out with a choke bomb. That way you are able to loot them. This gives you a chance for a better consumable or grants you another dark side boost second should you be the bounty carriers. And we are finally done. I hope you found one or two things that you didn't know yet. If you think the guide is not too shabby, sharing the video would be much appreciated. A like would make me happy too. I was working on a boss guide, had to toss that one in the trash with all the changes from the last patches, so that will take a bit longer until everything is done. If you have any questions, just want to discuss the game, or want to see me play memes and meta, feel free to come over to twitch.tv slash psychigos and say hi. I'm streaming almost daily and it's mostly hunt. Hunt is love, hunt is life. Looking for someone to play because I get that question a lot, check out the link to our Discord. There are various looking for group channels and also my streaming channel. Enough advertising. I try to keep the guides up to date in a pinned comment, but no promises. It's hard to keep track of 150 tips and tricks, to be honest. I do not know if there will be another tips and tricks guide. 150 is already a lot, and I try to make the video as compact as possible. I don't want to talk 15 minutes about 10 tips, you know. Furthermore, I want to keep the quality of the tips high. Like, hey guys, when you're missing a, a health chunk, you should go to a supply point and heal up. That's kind of, hmm. All right. Thank you for watching. Also, a big thank you to my patrons for the support. It's helping a lot with everything I do, so you guys are truly amazing. Feel free to check out the rest of the channel. It's mostly Hunt, but there's also other stuff. I hope you will like it. I see you in the next one. Until then, have a good day.